to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. Beautiful because God's here and we're here. And to acknowledge his name. Now you can obviously see that I'm not Craig. Here's to what's on your list. My name's Mike Perrett. Um, and I've been asked to fill in for Craig, who had an operation on Monday and is still recovering. But we're here to worship our Lord and to acknowledge him and to give him thanks for all he's done for us. So the Lord be with you. Lord with you. With you. Good morning, everybody. We begin on page 119 of the Green Prayer Book. But to begin with, we will say the prayer for Estella, which is in the top left-hand corner of your pew sheet. He will guide you in, into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I say, that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For those who are wondering where I come from, I was the rector of Narendra and Coolman for the last 10 years and decided to retire. But they keep bringing me back. <laughs> it's good to be with you this morning. Let's pray. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts today and always be acceptable to you, our Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, as you've heard earlier in the service, today is Trinity Sunday, where we celebrate the triune nature of God. The subject of the Trinity, which is a doctrine of the church, has caused much debate in the early church and continues to do so as people grapple with the idea of one God in three persons. Especially as the word, of, word Trinity does not appear anywhere in Scripture. So there are those that are saying, well, if it doesn't appear in Scripture, it's not so. Also, in my reading for this, I found that when the early missionaries went to China, 
The Chinese people used to draw a dragon with three heads. They could not grasp the idea either. However, we can see in Scripture that the idea of the triune nature of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, is evident from the first chapter of Genesis to the last chapter of Revelation. At the beginning we had God the Father, the Creator, then came Jesus and we saw God in the Son, and we have God in the Holy Spirit who came upon all disciples on that first Pentecost and every day since. The Holy Spirit still comes on the disciples of Jesus today, and that's each one of us as we gather in this place. Also, we see in Scripture the message of the Trinity is very evident, especially as we read Matthew 28, 19, where Jesus instructs his disciples to go and make disciples, baptising them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Then Paul, in his second letter to Corinthians, concludes his letter with a benediction, which we often use as a grace or a blessing in our services. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To get a picture of this three in one aspect of God, let us look at some simple analogies, and you've probably heard them through your life's journey. Namely, the analogy of water in its parts, three-leaf clovers, the three-strand rope, and so on. All of which are a picture of unity and strength. And in the Trinity, we see that unity and strength. Jesus often speaks about it. Now, we humans are created by God in his, in his image. And we have a body, a soul, and a spirit. We are, we are beings with three parts. Our physical body is obvious. People see it. Sometimes we're not happy with what they see. But our soul and our spirit are not, but they ju are just as real as the flesh. Our soul is made up of three parts also. Firstly, the mind or thinking department. Secondly, our will, where we decide whether we will or will not. And thirdly, there are our actions which are visible as they come from our mind and our will. Our soul governs how we live because we, our thinking is re revealed through our body and our actions, which gives us a unique and integral identity. God must enjoy doing things in three. Now, soul is important to God because it is the only part of us God has no control over. Think about that for a minute. You see, God has given us free will to decide whether we will or we will not. And that decision is made in our soul, our, our inner core, our essence, if you want. Therefore, we have a freedom to choose how we think, make decisions and act. But as Christians, we have a responsibility for our soul and have to commit our, to keeping our soul in a right relationship with God, with the Trinity, so that we'll eventually be in eternity and united in that Trinity or with that Trinity. So it is with God. To know the truth about God, we need to know the truth about God the Creator, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. And we have three different distinct and different experiences with God in our daily lives. We have our personal experience with God the Creator as we walk about seeing the flowers and the trees and witnessing the morning sunrise, feeling the rain on our face. We've been doing a bit of that lately. We see God in creation and also when we see the birth of our grandchildren or great-grandchildren if you've got them. And we see that newborn babe and the intricacy of the body and how it then grows. You know, it's an amazing thing to see a new babe. So where is it we experience God the most? It's in our daily lives as we walk and talk and walk through the parks and the forests. 
Jesus taught that God was not only the God, the creator of heaven, the earth and everything in it, Jesus also taught that this creator of the world was none other than our heavenly father. Jesus said that when he was raised from the dead, I am going to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Jesus taught us that God is our personal father and we are God's personal children. Thus we see a God relationship as a father is with his children and we can experience that relationship if we are open to the love and grace of God that we feel in the Trinity or see in the Trinity. Another aspect of our experience is when we personally experience God in Jesus, who was the physical embodiment of God here on earth, the Christian faith teaches that the fullness of God's love lived fully in the body, mind and spirit of God, Jesus, in the flesh of Jesus. And you and I can experience Jesus all the time as we read and hear scripture and hear again the stories about Jesus in his life here on earth. We all probably have our favourite stories, but all of them reveal the divinity of Jesus and the presence of God in Christ as we feel and witness the grace of God in the miracles and in the compassion shown. And have you not read a passage that you've read many times before and have it jump out at you? That's the Spirit of God revealing that scripture to you at that time. And quite often I have found in my life that I needed that passage for that day. There's been something going on in the background and this gives me the answer that I've been seeking. Another aspect of our experience is when we personally experience God. In the Holy Spirit. And we see God in Christ through the death and resurrection of Jesus as we recall the events of Good Friday and Easter Sunday and witness the love that flows from the cross as Jesus forgives those who have put him there. The third experience of God is through his presence in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the experience of God here in our lives today and how you personally experience the presence of the Holy Spirit in our worship. We say in the Creed, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church in the communion of saints. God is present and reveals to himself within the communion of saints. And that's us here today. Just as we see God in nature and see God in Jesus, we also see God in the Spirit of God at work in the church. We do this as we hear the stories, the testimonies of people who have been touched by the Spirit of God and how he has helped, up, helped them through tough times. These stories are real and not just theological, biblical lessons and can touch us as we hear them over coffee or around a campfire or in a church service. While they tell us how God has been present and given strength in a particular situation. And I'm sure we all have our stories where God has helped us in a particular situation. These stories remind us of the presence of God through the Holy Spirit and of his reality in this day and age as well as in the years past. We experience God in our worship for the liturgy and the music reaches into our souls and finds that God connection. Music especially touches those deep inner chords of our soul that reason and rationality cannot touch. If you sit in a quiet time and meditate and play a little bit of Christian music and allow it to enter your soul, it can be very calming and soothing. We can experience the Spirit of God in our reading of Scripture and in our meditation. And that is why a devotional, a daily office help, is helpful as it leads us into a place of listening and being quiet and allowing God to speak. It is God in the Holy Spirit who is present at these times and right through the day as our companion, our guide, just as Jesus promised he would be. Many experience the presence of the Spirit of God 
as we come and share in the sacrament of the Holy Union or the Lord's Supper. If as we make confession as a community of our failures to live up to God's standard as we thank God for his love and forgiveness. We've got a bit of a problem with the connection in some way. As well as all that God has done and will do for us. Today as we take the wine and the bread, if we are open to the Holy Spirit, we are touched deeply as we take in the body and blood of Jesus through the sacrament by faith. Today we have heard again Jesus teach us that it will send his spirit, the spirit of truth, who comes to us from God. This spirit of truth will be with us forever, in us and around us, walking and talking with us. From this spirit of truth, we will probably discover the truth about God the Creator, the truth about God and the truth about the Holy Spirit, one God, the Trinity now and always. For believing and walking in the Trinity is an act of faith, an act of faith we do every day. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.